As you may see, there are only three of us here today because Leah is not well. We were sure well. We hope to see her soon and we all miss her. And there's lots to report on from the last time we spoke to you. We could not um, go any further in, in reporting about what we're doing without mentioning what has happened in Paris and also what has happened in a number of, of places since we were last here. ISIS, without doubt, um, oppose and abuse and are killing indiscriminately people of all religions and none. And we could see that not just in Paris, um, in Mali, we could see what has happened in Beirut and in other places all over the world. And as we sit here today, there are discussions going on in this parliament about whether dropping more bombs in Syria is the answer. It is certainly not the answer. It is not the solution. And the people of Syria are sandwiched between what ISIS is doing, or ISIL, or DAS, whatever name one wants to refer to them, the slaughter and the terror that they are going through, and also the terror of aerial raids that are being inflicted upon them from, from the West. So our hearts are with all of the people who are suffering at this time, and we must do much, much more to try to resolve the situation in the Middle East. Since I was last here with you, um, I've been to China, spent three days there on an issue on psychoactive substance, so-called legal highs. There are hundreds of young people um, dying when, as the consequences of consuming uh, these so-called legal um, drugs that people believe because they're able to purchase them and that they are classified and identified as legal. Uh, therefore, that is persuading young people to go and purchase them. Um, I was glad to be told that 116 of them have been prescribed and are prohibited in, uh, in China more than some member states. So we have established greater cooperation given that this is where they're being manufactured and controlled. Last week I spent two days in uh, London and talking and engaging with a number of groups and organisations, MEPs, ministers and others, uh, House of Lords and House of Commons and um, we were talking about the issue of Brexit and the implications of Brexit, particularly for Ireland, North and South. And if I hadn't been there as the MEP that was representing Ireland, Ireland would not have got a mention. Here we are back in Strasbourg, and there are hundreds of votes um, within the next few days, all too numerous to mention. So I will just hand you over now to Matt, and he will give you an update of some of the things that he's been doing over the last few weeks. Uh, thank you, Martina. And, um there's quite a number of issues that are coming um, to the fore, as you can imagine, following on from the Paris attacks and the uh, European Union's response and where the Irish government fits into that. And I know Lynn will touch on that. Some of the issues that are relatively minor in comparison that we are dealing with over the next number of weeks. I'm continuing my work in relation to TTIP and other trade agreements, including the TISA agreement, which is a trade in international services agreement, which similar to TTIP, it ha has the potential to have serious repercussions, not only for the way in which business is conducted and reshifting the balance towards major corporations, but also undermining the very fabric of the democratic structures that we hold um, in place and we hold very dear. And we will be issuing a number of um, key reports over the next number of weeks to try and ensure that, first of all, people are aware of the developments that are happening across the trade agenda um, that has been pursued very much at the behest of multinational corporations operations. Also this week in the Parliament here in Strasbourg we're going to be talking about the tax um, inquiry that has been conducted and unfortunately it's appearing very much that it's going to become a damp squib and no real action is going to be taken in terms of trying to um, ensure that the taxation that is due to member states and in turn to the citizens of Europe is actually going to be collected in the future from again the very same large corporations that have been very adept at using countries including Ireland to avoid paying their own their share of tax and that's something that we're going to be challenging um, very strongly on. So I'll hand you over to Lynn. Thanks Matt um, and as Martina and Matt have said our hearts go out to uh, the victims of the attacks last week in Mali, Beirut and Paris um, but I suppose what I want to talk about is the very worrying developments that came out of the Council of Europe last Friday where the French Foreign Minister invoked the Mutual Defence Clause of the Lisbon Treaty and that uh, call was supported unanimously which means that the Irish government um, did not object at the time to uh, invoking this Mutual Defence Clause 
clause. During the Lisbon campaigns, both campaigns, Sinn Féin always argued that this mutual defence undermined our neutrality. And here we are uh, once again in the position of saying we told you so. Um, it's very worrying to hear that there's a possibility that Irish troops will be sent to Mali to free up French troops to fight elsewhere. And as Martina said, uh, Fighting back at Syria and bombing Syria is not the answer to the problem that we have. But for Irish troops to go into Mali and not in a blue helmet capacity is absolutely a shift uh, in our policy and really does make us complicit in wars and undermines our neutrality. So Sinn Féin will resist that at all, all costs. Um, the other thing that I want to mention was the report on child poverty um, which is being voted on in this Strasbourg session and I suppose it's particularly relevant to Ireland because we have currently 1500 children who are homeless, 12% uh, of Irish children are living in consistent poverty, a figure that has doubled since this government came to power um, so this report is a very progressive report and it calls for childhood guarantee so that all children across Europe would have universal access to the basic uh, needs that they have, such as education, adequate housing, nutrition, uh, health care. So we'll be looking forward to supporting that report in, uh, in the plenary. So I'll leave it there. Hopefully the next time we'll be here, Leah will be feeling much better and she will join us. Until then, slang of oil.